Hi, thanks for joining us today. My name is Glenna Godinski, and today we're gonna to be doing a painting class with our guest artist, Debbie Cole. She's having us do a moonscape and a beautiful tree that you're gonna enjoy, and we're excited to have you here. Thank you so much. Welcome everybody, I'm glad you're able to join us today. These are what we're going to be painting, and as you can see, there's various different styles and colors so it's really going to be your painting done in your way. So before we get started, let's go over our supply list because you should have gotten um, with your registration a list of supplies and two instruction papers of each of the cards. The reason I, I included the instruction papers is that when you see this, if you want to write some notes, if you want to go back and get some different ideas a week from now, you'll have the basics. So if we go over the supply list first, I'll show you exactly what we'll be using. Now the first thing that you need is your watercolor paper. You can use this size and cut it into um, postcard size, or you can just go to the store and get a postcard pack of watercolor cards. So you paint your watercolor card, and then we have a backing. This is what it's on your list as called the matte back. So you see each one of these have a different color. So when you're done with your painting, you pull out your mats and you find out what color is going to work best for you. So you put the card on the mat and then the mat on the actual card. Hmm, that's kind of redundant, but that's what it is. So there you are. Now, I've been using double stick tape, but just the other day, I got some of this little glue stick and lo and behold, it works. So see what works best for you to keep them secure because you want it flat. I also used uh, like Elmer's glue, but don't do that. Uh, just don't do that. <laughs> we won't even go into why. Okay, so you have, should have your instructions. And then on the second page of the moon instructions, you should have a picture of a circle. So you trace that circle out and you cut it out and here's your moon. Alrighty, so what else do we need on our, our list of supplies? You need to have watercolor paints. Sounds easy. These watercolor paints are the cheapest watercolor paints you can buy. And if this is the first time you're doing it and you want to try it, fine, they're like two bucks. But the problem is, they don't have the same kind of pigment, as, pigment uh, as regular watercolor paint. You see the colors in here are vibrating. This is the colors that work that came out of this pack. They don't blend the same way and you can never get the dark colors the same way. But for the first time doing it, it's still pretty and if that's what you want to do, fine. These two I did the exact same time and that's how different the colors are in them. So it's up to you what you use. Okay. So, <clears throat> you also need a white gel pen. These can be bought even in the Jewel. You can get those anywhere. And we know what a medium sharpie is. And then you need just three brushes for this. Can you see the brushes here? From where you are? You get a nice flat, a wide flat, like one inch or a three quarter inch, a six or eight inch round, and then a tiny, it's called a liner brush, because you want something with a very delicate point. If you use the brush that comes with this, be prepared for a lot of heartache. <laughs> okay, so. You need two containers of water or a split one like this. The reason being is you're going to wash your brush a lot, so you're going to have dirty water, but when you need the water to help blend the colors, you're going to want clean water. You're also going to need a little bottle like this to spray your paints to get them all nice and juicy. And then lots of paper towels. You're going to need tape. As you can see here, this is called washi tape, and you take the edges, which will give you a nice crisp border, and it will also keep the watercolor card from rolling and, and buckling. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to tape your card. These are already done. Okay. Then the other thing you need is an old toothbrush, a pencil, eraser, a dark sheet of paper, of any color of any kind this is just to practice the stars and the flicking because you're going to be flicking a lot <laughs> flicking color all over the place so that's your um, end of your supplies the only thing I didn't mention was a paper plate 
And if you get a plastic coated paper plate, you're going to use this to kind of blend some colors if you need to. When you're ready to do the white to put the stars on, you're going to put that on here. So it's just kind of like a little palette on the side. Okay, so we've got everything we need, and I guess it's time to get going. We've got our supply list, and we understand where we're going. Let's get started in the fun time. So you're going to take your little template, and, you're, and I usually put it a little off-center, because that way you can, if you want, use your white gel print, and you can write something, thinking of you, uh, wish you were here, dream, love, I don't know, whatever you want to say. Okay, so we're going to draw it on. And then everybody's going to think this is the craziest thing because once you draw it, I'll just stick it there. You're going to take an eraser. Oh, yeah. And you're going to kind of take it right back off again. We don't want the line to show up in the picture, but you still want to see the outline of the moon so you have an idea what you're doing. And another thing I'll tell you is make sure you get all of the eraser stuff off because it gets in your paint and then it gets in your water and it can be a mess because I've done it. So you're going to wet your brush. That's another thing I want to tell you about your brushes. If you don't wet your brush all the way up to what they call the furl, which is the end, then when you put your brush in the paint, the paint will go right up in here. It'll dry in there and then it will make what happens when your, when your brush splits. So you just kind of get it wet. Make sure you have lots of paper towel nearby. You're going to take your brush out. And you're, I always touch it a little bit because you don't want it sopping wet, but you definitely want it wet. You're going to kind of keep it in an angle like this, and you're going to go all the way around the outline of the moon. You don't want to go into the moon because where the water is is where the paint will go. And right now, we don't want to see... We're just doing the sky behind the moon. We're not doing the moon right now. Also, when you're doing this, if you pick up your paint or your card and you angle it, you'll see where the paint is and where it isn't. Because you'll have a little bit of a shine. You see your shine, Haley? Almost. And what's interesting to me is it'll be real shiny one place and I'll look at it and it's like, did I just miss that whole spot? So this takes a little bit of time. Don't worry about it. it And what this does by putting, this is called the wet on wet technique in watercolor, and it will make all the colors blend beautifully. It just is so cool. Okay. <clears throat> now, let's see, we're going to use our flat brush. And the first thing I'm going to do here is get my paint so it's usable. So you see how I came, I don't know if you can see this, but I came onto the side here so I could mix it up so I don't have a big blob and it's all mixed. You can, you, you can use your, um, your plate for that too to smush it around. So once you get your blue, your first color blue, you're going to go delicately around the edge. Don't worry if it's not perfect. Don't worry if the color's not too bold. Because as soon as I'm done doing this, I'll show you what happens. So you're going to go almost all the way to the edge with the blue. And if you can see this card right here, that is the first go round. So you see they're not dark yet. It's going to be light. You're going to do a few... Um, um, you're going to do a, yeah, you're, it's perfect, a few coats before it gets the color you want. So you do your blue all the way around it, and then you're going to take a little bit of purple and kind of put it out on the out, out edges. Clean your brush, dip it in your black, and then you put that at the very edge. So it doesn't look pretty. It looks kind of sloppy. But it's the beginning. So then we take this kind of ugly looking thing we got here. Perfect. And this is how it is, and it's not done, but we're going to put it on the side. Because we need to let it dry completely <clears throat> before we can work on it again. When you put layers of color in watercolor, 
It's called glazing because it builds up the intensity and it gives it like complexness. It's like adding a lot of a lot of different spices to your stew instead of just salt and pepper. <laughs> Where the hell did that come from? <laughs> All right, good. Then we'll put that on the side and we'll let that dry. And now. Okay, so we're putting this on the side, and we're going to start with the next card, our little springtime tree. And this tree is supposed to look like a weeping cherry, unless you want it to be a lilac tree, <laughs> or any color you want, but that's the fun of it. And this card is so easy. So once again, wet your big, big brush, and you're going to go across the whole page on this one. And this is when you use your clean water. It doesn't matter too much now because our water is not too dirty. But <laughs> after rinsing it halfway through this, your water is going to look like mud. And you'd be putting mud on here. It would make all the colors go terrible. Okay. Then you get your toothbrush. <clears throat> and you're going to take your first color. In this case, why don't we start with the green? Green there. And we, in this particular case, to tell you the truth, I forgot the yellow, so we're going to do a light green and a dark green to give it some contrast rather than just have it plain. Okay, so you got your colors out. You can take your toothbrush. And we're going to dip it in the collar, just on the tip. And you're going to pull your thumb back. You put it over, and you pull your thumb back, and you start splattering green all over the place. And you pick up another green, and you splatter that. Try and keep it kind of on the top, two-thirds of the, of the paper if you can. But if it gets to the bottom, don't worry about it, then it's fine too. If you can't go wrong on this one, that's why I like it. So then I'm going to take a little bit of red here. The more diluted the color, the pale it, pale it will be. More pale it will be. Pale or lower. Or. I threw some of that in there. Something on the table. Yeah, but this one, it'll wash it. <laughs> okay, and if, if you look at it, because your oh, what did I do that for? Because your paint is still kind of, or your a card still kind of wet, you're going to see the color kind of blend together. If you get too much, just take it off. So it should kind of be a muted background at this point. Now I have some where it was in a drawing where it comes up a little crisper, but that's okay. It doesn't matter. It'll be fine. And then you go back and you do it again. Because now things are drying up a little bit. And we're back. Okay. Oh, I know that happened. Don't worry about it. That's fine. So once we've got this spattered like that, once again, we let things dry. So we put it on the side. How are you doing over there? Are you splattering? I'm splattering. Mm, I got some water. To That's dry. okay. <laughs> okay, so let's put that on the side and bring back our moon. Good job. Hey, what rinse that off? It'll get hard. <laughs> okay. So now we're back at our moon, and we're going to do the exact same thing we did before again. It will it will um, make your it will intensify your colors and start bringing your colors out. So first, like before, we started with our blue. And I try and put a little bit of purple in the corners here to kind of make it seem like it's going around. It's like an aura around the moon. Great. 
Now our color is starting to darken and, and be a little bit more vibrant than it was. Now you can see on mine how it, it's just line, line, line. It's not blended. So now is when I'm going to try and work it a little better. I usually do it by taking my blue and then just follow it out all the way out. So it blends it a little bit so you follow it all the way out to the edge and then you bring it back in a little bit. And so this blends things a little bit better. If you're still getting a hard line um, between your colors and sometimes from your paintbrush, don't worry about it. It looks like a real hard line now, but we're going to soften it when we put um, <clears throat> the next time we put, the third time we put a set of colors on this after it dries, we're going to flick some of this white paint on it. And by putting the, the, um, the white paint on it when it's still wet, we'll make it kind of fade into the background. Then we let it dry and we do the stars again, and then they'll be crisp. I'm going to put white paint there for you us to use. We can just share it. There we go. Okay. Now, if you find your outside is getting real wet, I just go like this and kind of dry it off so I don't drip it all over the place. Make a huge mess. Yeah. The other day, I, I, I got some paint on the table, and all of a sudden, I had it on paintbrushes, I had it on my hands, I had it on my clothes. I'm like, whoa, what just happened? <laughs> Good. Okay, so this is what mine looks like now, and you can see I've got, kind of got some brush strokes, but I'm not panicking. I have faith. <laughs> you want to do yours a little darker? I'll wait. Sorry. Don't be I sorry. I haven't blending all the way around stuff yet. Hold it. So you go. There you go. It's pretty. You're doing fine. It's perfect. Oops. No, that's okay. Don't yeah. worry about it. It'll, it'll be okay. That's another thing, once you find out how to start. <clears throat> and another thing to, to edge, to ease your edge, if you take your brush, it's right in front of me, and dry it off as much as you possibly can, and then kind of come back and you'll be very, there you go, and you'll, and you'll make it, yeah, kind of blend our colors a little bit. Is that working for you? I was more purple. That's what I was going for. You need more pigment. <laughs> You need more paint. And smush it there a little bit. Another thing I do is when I pick up my colors, like if I pick up this purple here and I put it on here, I can see how dark it is. If I want it darker, do it again. I also keep pieces, which I don't have here either, of old um, watercolor paper around the house so I can say, all right, what's this going to look like? Well, I want it darker, so then I put more Put more paint on your brush. The more paint, the darker the color. Oh, that's better. I like that color. That's your, yeah. Where's, where's the No, no, you're doing great. Perfect. Okay. So we put this again on the side to dry. This is why we do two cards in our classes, because we need time for them to dry. At home, I go put in a load of wash. I do a load of dishes. I vacuum something, and then I come back. <laughs> How are we doing? You okay? Good. Okay. So now we're taking our round brush, not the liner brush, but the six or eight line brush. And the brown, whatever brown you have. In our case, we're using a, a, a bird sienna, but you can use any brown that you want. So get your brown color on. Make sure you're dry. Here's one. I must have taken yours. <laughs> no, okay. okay. So in this case, we're going to be doing the, the trunk. So what you're going to do, can you see that there? All right. So you're going to start in the one corner, corner, and you're just going to flatten your brush out and bring it up on an angle. You kind of got like a little arch. You don't want it to go all the way, you just want it to go part of the way. Good. 
make your make make your little fatter at the bottom so we have a real trunk <laughs> and then you can take oh and do maybe one or two branches with this big thick um, brush then you're going to go to your liner brush using the same brown and this time you're going to put little wispy branches all through it just to give it a an idea of hidden branches in it. They're going to show, do you have your liner brush? Yeah, good. They're going to show the um, shape of the tree by how they fall. And you're not going to put them everywhere. You're just going to kind of put them here and there, peeking out between the branches. So it looks kind of like that. Beautiful. And you look at it and you Think you want more? Yeah, put in more. If you don't want more, leave it. And if you find that you don't want more now, but when we get done further, you like it, then just add more then. Nice job. Beautiful. And then once again, you go back to your colors with your toothbrush. Now when you flick, you're covering up part of the blank branches and your color is going to look sharp. Darker. And every time you do this, it's going to be different. And I think that's one of the reasons why I like it, is because you you don't know what quite what's going to happen. And there we have a, a little. A little tree with flowers. It's a little higher from your tape. And if you need to put more color on it, put more color on it. You don't have to be cheap. Get the color. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't, you, are you happy with that? I'm going to add more red. Okay. And maybe purple. Okay, then fine. <laughs> That's the fun of it. And because we have our colors here, oh, I think I would like a little purple in it then. You can do it. And you can add yellow to it. You can add whatever colors you want. Nice. It's surprisingly easy, and it almost looks delicate. <laughs> Look, did I do that? Okay, now let's see. How you doing? You want to put some more on it? I'm going to put more branches. Okay. But we can proceed. Are we switching back to the moon? We're going to switch back to the moon if your moon is dry. <clears throat> well, you're going to have to wash your table. Sorry. You can't have it all around. Okay. That's pretty, Haley. Here, turn it up. Can you see it? Good. See? We all are having fun. All right, one more time back to the blue for the moon. This is our last time on the moon, hopefully. Oh, that was great. Is your paint, uh, you're not long in front yet. Oh, no. It's not dry yet. Oh, if you're not dry, just wait a little bit. Now, I just went in a little bit on my moon with my color, and I really didn't want to do that. Now, I can take a plain brush, or a plain, clean brush, and just maybe swoop it out a little bit. But don't worry about it, because I, I know a way to fix it. So then we're going to take... Our little wet moon and our paint, uh, toothbrush, 
Just clean your toothbrush off real good. Dip it in the white. And then just flick some stars. <clears throat> and you'll see that they seem real bright now, but as they fade, they're, they're blending into the color that's there, and they'll kind of fade out, which will make things look a little better. Also, if you look at my moon, right now my moon's not very round. <laughs> so we'll fix it. Your moon is good and round. Close. It's, but the moon's not going to be round in the sky anyhow. So we're going to let this dry again. How are you doing over there? <laughs> you see, I th yeah, I you're doing. I'm, doing I'm trying, now. and that's why we have you here, Haley. So you slow me down, because <laughs> I've only made about 17 of these. I've been practicing. See how long they take, what colors I like. So it just takes a little longer when you've never done it before. A little bit. A little bit. Okay, is that streak okay? Okay, you would blend it out a little bit if you can. There, just easy, nice and simple. There you go. You want a little more purple? I'm okay with this. Okay, you like that? Okay, good. Just going to get rid of my little streaks. There you go. And then you can flick your first flick. set of um, stars. stars. Perfect. There we go. Is it wet? Get a little bit wet if you can. <laughs> yeah, no black water. <laughs> and if you want, this is why you have that... A plain piece of dark paper that I forgot to tell you about, but I'll show you now. If you have a, comp all right, let's do wet first. If you have a really wet toothbrush and you dip it in your paint, it's going to have light drops, light stars. If it's really, 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 really dry, it looks the same. But at least it gives you an idea what you're doing. <laughs> hey, babe. Okay. So we're letting that dry for the last time. We're coming back over here to our to our tree for the last time. And I'm going to show you one more thing that you can do. <clears throat> if you have a brush, I have a brush with a small end. You can use that. Um, or you can use, that's called a stylus, and um, it's just a little thin line that you have to thing. You just need a, something, some little point. So if you dip it in the red, oops, sorry, dip it in the brown, with the corner of your brush, the end of your brush, and you come over here, you're going to make a big dot. And each time you put it down, the dots get smaller. So if there's a place on here where you want your dots to be a little brighter and bring the whole thing to life a little bit more, you can do it with the end of your brush. So you flick it, you can do it this way, there's all kinds of ways, and this kind of highlights little areas that you may want a little more color on. You can't do it wrong. I have some branches here that don't have any color, so I put some right near there. And it just puts the color a little bit brighter. And then, basically, this guy's done. The other thing I tell everybody is no matter what you do, you sign it. Put your initials on it. Put your name on it. Claim it. It's yours. What are you doing? No, I'll do that. Then you let that dry a little bit more. Um, whenever you do the dots with either the end of your brush or a stylus, those dots take a little bit longer to dry than everything else. So we'll just let that dry one more time. Oh, things are looking pretty good on our moon. How you doing? Yours is still wet. That's okay. There you go. Well, you know what? Why don't we carefully... When you take your tape, the edges off, don't just rip it straight up. Rip it to the side like that. And that will protect it from ripping up your paper. 
there's I can't tell you how many times I've taken a little chunk out of that card when I take my tape off. So we put it to the side. Always have a garbage can near you because there's lots of garbage. Lots of wet towels, tape. Oh, and I don't think I told you about this in the beginning. When we were talking about your supplies, on your list of supplies, it has a, a hard cardboard surface. And that's what this is. So I cut this out of a piece of cardboard, cardboard box. And then I put the um, tape that you use when you're mailing, mailing tape, that big, thick mailing tape, and I put it over it. So that now I can put this on here and we can tape it down and it'll stay there and everything will be pretty. So there's the finished card. And now you're gonna have to hold up your finished card. Look at how delicate hers is, isn't that beautiful? That easy. Okay, so we got one card done. And let's go back to this bad boy mode. I'm still drawing, but you go on. But that's okay that you're drawing because you're going to be able to do what we're doing with it that, okay. that little bit of wet. Because the wet's kind of on the edges. You're okay. Okay. Once again, you're going to take your brush. You're going to dip it in the white. And you're going to flick your stars again. But this time, they're going to stay on the outside. They're, they're going to stay bright. They're not going to blend in because you're more dry. And by putting those stars on there, not only does it give it kind of a starlit sky feel, but it helps all those lines that everybody think that line is so important that we can't have a streak here or a streak there, but it blends right out. Now we're going to do the inside of the moon. That's pretty. That is really pretty. Okay, so we're going to use our round brush. And the first thing I do is I, I round my moon out. Like I can tell here, I'm just making my edge, so I have just with clean water, right? With just with clean, yep. Yeah, sorry, for, I didn't tell you. And you're just what happens is when you use that clean water right on the edge, you're you're making you're you're like waking up the color again. That's any way to say it. If like here, I think it's too far out. It's kind of moonlight, uh, not moonlight. Um, I don't know what I'm. It's not right. So I'm bringing some color in. You don't want it too dark. Maybe just blend, blend it in. Just to round things out a little better. I got a flat head up there. And times are tough. As I heard today, we survived the pandemic. <laughs> we could do anything. Okay, I like that a little better. And you're going to clean your brush. You can't wait to see this now. And you're going to just rub your brush with clean water in this little round brush in the middle of your moon. Try not to hit the edges too much because if you have too much water, it'll bleed in too much. And then you're going to take just a hair of color of the black. See, that's way too dark. So you're going to make it so you almost don't have any color and you just Dap it. You just tap it around. So that's what the moon looks like. Hardly any color, just a lot of water. A little bit of the blue, a little bit of the black. And I like to put a little bit of the purple in it. It just kind of fixes it all up. And as you can see, I'm just not really painting as much as just smearing stuff around. And then you play with it until you're done playing with it. <laughs> really got that close. See what a hard time I'm having with that. Let me right there. 
Now, I don't like what I've done here as far as this edging here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let that dry. <laughs> oh, you made my noodle. And then I'm going to darken my, um, my blues. And I'm going to make one more trip around the block here to straighten out my mold. And I like it better. So I'm going to let that dry and as you can see it looks kind of funny now because I've got stars out here and nothing in here but as soon as that dries I can get the stars in there and we've got ourselves in the moonscape. Nice. <laughs> it's And then when it dries tonight, now um, watercolor also when it dries fades, it, it lightens up. So I liked this but I, I wanted a little, a little darker. So you can go back and you can play. And then at the end, I usually take just a dab of the darkest color I have and right on the tip. And if you put it on a, well, I have to light it down. If you put it on a wet spot, it will, what they call blossom. And it looks like those craters that are in the moon. Okay, look at her moon. There you go. Good job. Okay, now we're going to let our moon dry for the last time. And so here's our finished um, a little tree. And what I want to show you is the most magical thing. The back mat. Here's it in pink. Well, that's pretty. Oh, but here's it in red. Mmm, not bad either. Here's it in yellow. And here's something, I had a few of these that are different prints, and sometimes when you put them on, they to me they look kind of like, um, I don't know, kind of kicky, like you'd have in a, in a farmhouse. <laughs> so when you're done with your picture, you pick the mat that you feel goes with your picture and the colors that you use. Every time you make these, you, you bring out more color of one kind or another. Like in this one, we have the, the, there's not very much pink, but there's a lot of red. So that's that particular one. So when you get to your moon, we have purples and blues and turquoises. And as you can see here, this is one with purple on it. And this is one where I, where I drew dream with um, the white, thank you, the white gel pen on the table for you to see. <laughs> okay, so this is done, but I have to take the tape off. So once again, it's a little wet up here, so I'm going to be very careful. We pull it to the side. And we pull this to the side. Okay. It's kind of like opening a present at the end of you never know what it's going to look like until you take the tape. Oh, see, and I see right there, I pulled a little piece of the watercolor paper. That's why we do it real slow so that doesn't happen like I just did it. <laughs> did it again. I don't know why this one's sticking. Okay, so what color are we going to put on this? No. No. Ooh, maybe. Now, if you look up here where I pulled off some of the tape, you can see it looks a little jagged. 
just take your little brush and you can go along that line to straighten it out. Does yours peel a little bit? And then if you do something like I just did, I'm so glad I did this for you to see. I got a little bit, oh, on the table. I got a little bit of the color into the white here. If I look, if I let that dry, I can come back with the same white paint that I used for the stars and just do a line of white and it will crisp up the end real nice. And there you are. So I take my little pen, that white one again. See, I have my assistant. And I put my initials in the white pen so it shows up. And there you are. So there's the moon. Can you see that? Am I leaving it long enough? All righty. And then here's our tree. That's the color I'm picking. Okay, and then here's Haley's tree. Let's see what color he would be like the red. And there's Haley's. See, she signed and she put the date. She's got 2021, so she knows when she made this. That turned out so beautiful. And then let's see. Oh, she's taken off the tape for her moon. So as soon as she gets the tape off her moon, I know Haley, so <laughs> Haley's probably gonna like the purple. There's a light purple, or do you like the dark purple? The dark. And there's Haley's with the dark purple. So thank you everybody for coming. I hope you like your cards. And until next time, we'll see you then. And a little extra good news. If you're interested and would like to make a donation of your cards that you make, you can drop them off at the South Elgin Branch Library, which is located at 127 South McLean Boulevard in South Elgin, right by the Butera Grocery Store. What we'll do with the cards is each month, I take activity kits to all of our 24 different senior and developmental care communities. And so I'll include those cards along with one of my drop-offs. So it can be done in any month. You just drop them by the South Elgin Branch Library and they get them to me. So we can take as many as you feel like making and it certainly makes someone's day. So thanks again for tuning in.